Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Shakespeare in Detroit's newsletter. We are so happy that you allow us in your inboxes. We know you get a lot of email and we're just overjoyed that you clicked on this one to check us out and what we're up to right now in 2019 as we gear up for what will be our, our biggest season yet, uh, the 2020 season, 2020-2021 season. By the way, we would love to hear from you. If you have suggestions on shows that you would like to see, please send us a message at info at shakespeareanddetroit.com. That's I as an igloo, N as in Nancy, F as in Frank, O as in orange, at shakespeareanddetroit.com. We have a lot of, of plays that are in consideration from As You Like It, to Mackers, to Romeo and Juliet, to King Lear, to... Um, the Two Gentlemen of Verona. Let us know what you think. What's your favorite play? Tell us what your favorite play is by either commenting on our YouTube page where this video lives or by sending us a note at info at shakespeareanddetroit.com. We do this for you, so we want to hear, hear from you. We want to know what you think and what you love as far as the canon, as far as Shakespeare's plays are concerned. So yeah, looking forward to reading your emails. But one of the things that, or the main thing that I wanted to discuss with you all today, or just share a little bit about was our thoughts, our values on why Shakespeare in Detroit matters to the overall cultural infrastructure in the city. One of the, the um, quotes that I use a lot that I actually got from another uh, um, artistic or cultural, cultural change maker in the city is, um, businesses will bring people to Detroit, but the arts will make them stay. And that really resonated with me and I share it now because it's so true, right? Like people don't go to New York City because Wall Street is cool. They go because they wanna see a show on Broadway or off Broadway, or they wanna to go to a museum or walk around the parks or, you know, experience the ballet, go see Misty Copeland, you know, who doesn't wanna see Misty? They wanna do those sort of things and have those sort of uh, experiences that enhance their quality of life. And I think, I know rather that that's important as uh, the city continues to evolve and grow. And I have to say, first of all, Detroit has always been a cool place to live. I've lived here most of my life, born and raised in Detroit, a Detroit public school student. And I've always thought it was cool, um, but I think it's cooler now because, well, we have Shakespeare in Detroit here in the city. <laughs> and of course, I'm really, really biased. <laughs> but no, in, in all seriousness, the, the cultural infrastructure of any city is really important to its success because it inspires tourism, it enhances the quality of life for residents who live there, from students to seniors, and it also, um, you know, it also makes uh, memories and things that money can't buy available to, to families. You know, if you don't have anything to do with your family on the weekends or after work for those bits of life that, that really, really matter, then, then why would you stay here, you know? And the thing about Shakespeare that is so cool is that it has over 400 years of proven consumer engagement. You know, that's a word that a lot of businesses like to use. And I think the rare thing about theater or what we do, specifically, I'll speak to Shakespearean theater, um, this part of the classical theater canon is that um, people have been going to see Shakespeare for hundreds of years. And this happens all around the world, you know, from the United States to uh, Asia, to Europe, of course, to Africa. People know this work, they know the plays, they're inspired by the plays, so they might write another play that's inspired by one of Shakespeare's plays. It's just um, a really impactful uh, canon of work that even today, even now, still touches us and reflects or mirrors our lives. And so we think it just makes perfect sense for Detroit to have a Shakespeare company. And we're so honored to be at the forefront of bringing more Shakespeare to Detroit, the place that um, raised me. And personally, it's an honor to be able to raise this theater company and to see it grow and be a part of the city because this city is um, such a huge part of my life. My mom's still here, my dad's still here, my cousins, uh, my nephew, everybody. Everybody's here. <laughs> and um, I travel a lot, but I always come back here because for me, this is the only place where I could do the sort of work that we do, you know, and, and work with the type of artists that we work with. And though we do have people come from all over the, the country to work with us, I mean, those folks who are here in the city embedded with us, they have this beautiful uh, connection with the city and its residents that 
really can't be duplicated. It's so genuine and you know, you know how we do in the Rust Belt, how we do in the Midwest. We just, we really respect one another. We, we, um, we're hospitable and we just have this affinity for our, our fellow Detroiters, for our fellow Michiganders, for our fellow, fellow uh, Midwesterners, for our fellow everybody. We just love everybody. I think that that probably has something to do with our, our Southern roots. And so when we come together under the stars, you know, during a park show or um, during one of our performances indoors, it's always really special. There's no other place in the world where I would make art or make my artistic home than Detroit. I love it. And I know you love it too because you continue to support Shakespeare in Detroit. So yeah, businesses will bring people to, to the city, but the arts will make them stay. Because at the end of the day, you can retire from work, you can retire from your career. What you never retire from though is from yourself, from your heart, from your values, from your humanity. And that is what Shakespeare's stories, what those narratives perpetuate, what they, they mirror for us, our own lives. And, uh, and also the windows that they, that they provide into other people's lives. It's really special and I'm so glad to be on this journey with you all. I just wanted to, to make another video and say hi so that you could hear from me directly and know how much um, I, I just care about staying connected with you all and how grateful I am that you're here with us. But yeah, don't forget, please send us an email at info, I as an igloo, N as in Nancy, F as in Frank, O as an orange at Shakespeare, in Detroit.com so that I can uh, I can hear from you. I want to know what your favorite play is. What's your, your favorite? Do you like comedies? Do you like tragedies? Do you like the histories? What do you want to see Shakespeare in Detroit do? Or if we've already done it, you know, we'll probably do it again because that's just the way it works. I want to hear from you directly. Send us a note. Looking forward to it. Oh, and if you're interested in, in supporting our work, which you may have seen a bit about in our previous video, our work in schools this fall 2019, Shakespeare in Detroit in schools, then please go to shakespeareindetroit.com and click on the button. It'll be in the upper right hand corner that says donate and give a tax deductible donation today. We appreciate you in advance and as always, thank you for being wonderful. We call you Team SID. I hope you know that. Team SID. You all are the best. And we are so happy to have been with you the past six years and we're looking forward to the next, the next few, the next 20, the next 30, the next 40, the next 50, the next infinite years ahead. It's been wonderful. Let's keep doing it, friends. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.